back to Oldest Math. This is Professor Parker, and for today's lesson, we're going to talk about subtracting mixed numbers and fractions. Now, first thing, let's look at the problem. We have 5 and 1 eighths minus 3 fifths. Now, what do these numbers actually mean? So I got 5 and 1 eighths. That means I got five whole objects, and then another object, I have that object is broken down into eight equal parts, right? That's why my denominator is an eight. And then out of those eight equal parts, I'm only focused on one of those parts, or I only have one of those pieces, right? Imagine a pizza, a pizza cut up into eight slices, you have one slice. So maybe you ordered five pizzas and people were eight. You had a party, five whole pizzas, and then one eighth of another pizza. Then over here, we're trying to subtract three fifths from that. So what does three fifths mean? It means you have an object of some sort broken up into five equal pieces, and then we're focused on three of those pieces. All right, now one way to do this problem would be to just convert this mixed number into an improper fraction and then subtract, but we're not gonna do it like that, because I wanna show you the skill of how to subtract fractions from mixed numbers. Now, it's a couple things we gotta do here. First thing is, because we're doing subtraction, just like if we were doing addition, you need common denominators, common denominators, but that's an eight and that's a five, so they're not common right now. So let's think about what the common denominator would be between eight and five. It's the least common multiple. One way to get that is just to multiply these numbers together, right? In this case, you end up with the least common multiple. Sometimes you'll get a common multiple, but not the smallest one. In this case, you will get the least one. So eight times five is 40. So this is gonna, and let me rewrite this, right? So we got five and one eighth. Let's write it vertically like this, right? And then, so this is gonna change into five, and then I'm gonna have a denominator of 40. And this is gonna turn into a denominator of 40, right? Now, the eight turns into a 40 because we did eight times five. So we gotta be consistent. If I multiply by five at the bottom, I gotta multiply by five on top. So one times five is five. Now, the five turned into a 40 by multiplying by eight. So if I multiply by eight on the bottom, I gotta multiply by eight on top. So three times eight is gonna be 24. And you gotta have your multiplication facts memorized, so this could be easy to do. Now I got five and five fortieths minus 24 fortieths. That's a problem, because even though my denominators are the same, using this method, we don't want to end up with negative values because five minus 24 would give us a negative value. Using this method, we don't want to do that, right? So what we're also going to have to do is borrow. We got to borrow from this whole number five. It's kind of like taking money from your right pocket and putting it into the left pocket because you're going to take one whole five, one whole from the five and add it to the five fortieths, right? So we're going to do, we're going to change this to a four because we're borrowing from it and we're going to add a fraction that's the same value as one, which is 40 over 40 because your denominator has got to be the same. So what happens is you're going to have four, matter of fact, let me write it down here. You're going to have four and 45 fortieths. Where'd the 45 come from? Five plus 40, five plus 40. That's where the 45 came from. And then I'm subtracting 24 fortieths. And we subtract our whole numbers, four up top minus zero. So that's four. And then 45 fortieths minus 24 fortieths. What does that give us? That gives us 21 fortieths. 45 take away 24 is 21. And this fraction cannot be reduced because the only common factor 21 and 40 have is one. So that means we're done. So the final answer, four and 21 fortieths. Notice what we did. We had to find common denominators. We had to also borrow, and then we were able to subtract. And that's today's lesson.